humans. This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on, on humans. You are listening to the second part, part two, which contains section three and four, which deal with the topics of habitat and population, biology, anatomy and physiology, genetics, life cycle, diet, biological variation, and race. The second part begins now. Humans, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Section 3. Habitat and Population. Early human settlements were dependent on proximity to water and, depending on the lifestyle, other natural resources used for subsistence, such as populations of animal prey for hunting and arable land for growing crops and grazing livestock. But humans have a great capacity for altering their habitats by means of technology, through irrigation, urban planning, construction, transport, manufacturing goods, deforestation, and desertification. Deliberate habitat alteration is often done with the goals of increasing material wealth, increasing thermal comfort, improving the amount of food available, improving aesthetics, or improving ease of access to resources or other human settlements. With the advent of large-scale trade and transport infrastructure, proximity to these resources has become unnecessary, and in many places these factors are no longer a driving force behind the growth and decline of a population. Nonetheless, the manner in which a habitat is altered is often a major determinant in population change. Technology has allowed humans to colonize all of the continents and adapt to virtually all climates. Within the last century, humans have explored Antarctica, the ocean depths, and outer space, although large-scale colonization of these environments is not yet feasible. With a population of over 7 billion, humans are among the most numerous of the large mammals. Most humans, 61%, live in Asia. The remainder live in the Americas, 14%, Africa, 14%, Europe, 11%, and Oceania, 0.5%. Human habitation within closed ecological systems and hostile environments, such as Antarctica and outer space, is expensive, typically limited in duration, and restricted to scientific, military, or industrial expeditions. Life in space has been very sporadic, with no more than 13 humans in space at any given time. Between 1969 and 1972, two humans at a time spent brief intervals on the moon. As of November 2012, no other celestial body has been visited by humans, although there has been a continuous human presence in space since the launch of the initial crew to inhabit the International Space Station on October 31st, 2000. However, other celestial bodies have been visited by human-made objects. Since 1800, the human population has increased from 1 billion to over 7 billion. In 2004, some 2.5 billion out of 6.3 billion people, or 39.7%, lived in urban areas, and this percentage is expected to continue to rise throughout the 21st century. In February 2008, the UN estimated that half the world's population would live in urban areas by the end of the year. Problems for humans living in cities include various forms of pollution and crime, especially in inner-city and suburban 
slums. Humans have had a dramatic effect on the environment. As humans are rarely preyed upon, they have been described as super predators. Currently, through land development, combustion of fossil fuels, and pollution, humans are thought to be the main contributor to global climate change. If this continues at its current rate, it is predicted that climate change will wipe out half of all species over the next century. Section 4. Biology. Anatomy and Physiology. Human body types vary substantially. Although body size is largely determined by genes, it is also significantly influenced by environmental factors such as diet and exercise. The average height of an adult human is 1.4 meters, or 4 feet 7 inches, to 1.9 meters, 6 feet 3 inches tall. Although this varies significantly from place to place and depending on ethnic origin. The average mass of an adult human is 54 to 64 kilograms, 120 to 140 pounds for females, and 76 to 83 kilograms, 168 to 183 pounds for males. Weight can also vary greatly. Although humans appear hairless compared to other primates, with notable hair growth occurring chiefly on the top of the head, underarms, and pubic area, the average human has more hair follicles on his or her body than the average chimpanzee. The main distinction is that human hairs are shorter, finer, and less heavenly pigmented than the average chimpanzees, thus making them harder to see. Humans, like other primates, have sweat glands, better enabling them to conserve energy in tropical environments. The hue of human skin and hair is determined by the presence of pigments called melanins. Human skin hues can range from dark brown to pale pink or even nearly white or colorless, such as in cases of albinism. Human hair ranges from white to brown to red to most commonly black. This depends on the amount of melanin, an effective sun-blocking pigment, in the skin and hair, with hair melanin concentrations in hair fading with increased age, leading to gray or even white hair. Most researchers believe that skin darkening was an adaptation that evolved as a protection against ultraviolet solar radiation, which also helps balancing folate, which is destroyed by ultraviolet radiation, and vitamin D, which requires sunlight to form. The skin pigmentation of contemporary humans is clinically distributed across the planet and in general correlates with the level of ultraviolet radiation. Human skin also has a capacity to darken in response to exposure to ultraviolet radiation, as in sun tanning. Humans tend to be physically weaker than other similarly sized primates. The construction of the human pelvis differs from other primates as do the toes. As a result, humans are slower for short distances than most other animals, but are among the best long-distance runners in the animal kingdom. Humans' thinner body hair and more productive sweat glands also help avoid heat exhaustion while running for long distances. A trade-off for these advantages of the modern human pelvis is that childbirth is more difficult and dangerous, especially given that the larger head size of human babies compared to other primates. 
This means that human babies must turn around as they pass through the birth canal, which other primates do not do, and it makes humans the only species in which females require help from their conspecifics to reduce the risks of birthing. Humans have proportionally shorter palates and much smaller teeth than other primates. They are the only primates to have short, relatively flush canine teeth. Humans have characteristically crowded teeth with gaps from lost teeth, usually closing up quickly in young individuals. Humans are gradually losing their wisdom teeth, with some individuals having them congenitally absent. Genetics Like all mammals, humans are a diploid eukaryotic species. Each somatic cell has two sets of 23 chromosomes, each set received from one parent. Gametes have only one set of chromosomes, which is a mixture of the two parental sets. Among the 23 chromosomes, there are 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. Like other mammals, humans have an XY sex determination system, so that females have the sex chromosomes XX and males have XY. One human genome was sequenced in full in 2003, and currently efforts are being made to achieve a sample of the genetic diversity of the species. By present estimates, humans have approximately 22,000 genes. The variation in human DNA is minute compared to that of other species, possibly suggesting a population bottleneck during the late Pleistocene, circa 100,000 years ago, in which the human population was reduced to a small number of breeding pairs. Nucleotide diversity is based on single mutations called single nucleotide polymorphisms. The nucleotide diversity between humans is about 0.1%, which is one difference per 1,000 base pairs. The difference of one in 1,000 nucleotides between two humans chosen at random amounts to approximately 3 million nucleotide differences since the human genome has about 3 billion nucleotides. Most of these single nucleotide polymorphisms are neutral, but some, about 3 to 5 percent, are functional and influence phenotypic differences between humans through alleles. By comparing the parts of the genome that are not under natural selection, and which therefore accumulate mutations at a fairly steady rate, it is possible to reconstruct a genetic tree incorporating the entire human species since the last shared ancestor. Each time a certain mutation, a single nucleotide polymorphism, appears in an individual and is passed on to his or her descendants, a haplogroup is formed, including all of the descendants of the individual who will also carry that mutation. By comparing mitochondrial DNA, which is inherited only from the mother, geneticists have concluded that the last female common ancestor, whose genetic marker is found in all modern humans, the so-called mitochondrial Eve, must have lived about 200,000 years ago. The forces of natural selection have continued to operate on human populations with evidence that certain regions of the genome display directional selection in the past 15,000 years. Life Cycle As with other mammals, human reproduction takes place as 
internal fertilization by sexual intercourse. During this process, the erect penis of the male is inserted into the female's vagina until the male ejaculates semen, which contains sperm. The sperm travels through the vagina and cervix into the uterus or fallopian tubes for fertilization of the ovum. Upon fertilization and implantation, gestation then occurs within the female's uterus. The zygote divides inside the female's uterus to become an embryo, which over a period of 38 weeks or 9 months of gestation becomes a fetus. After this span of time, the fully grown fetus is birthed from the woman's body and breathes independently as an infant for the first time. At this point, most modern cultures recognize the baby as a person entitled to the full protection of the law, though some jurisdictions extend their personhood earlier to human fetuses while they remain in the uterus. Compared with other species, human childbirth is dangerous. Painful labors lasting 24 hours or more are not uncommon, and sometimes lead to the death of the mother, the child, or both. This is because of both the relatively large fetal head circumference and the mother's relatively narrow pelvis. The chances of a successful labor increased significantly during the 20th century in wealthier countries with the advent of new medical technologies. In contrast, pregnancy and natural childbirth remain hazardous ordeals in developing regions of the world, with maternal death rates approximately 100 times greater than in developed countries. In developed countries, infants are typically 3 to 4 kilograms, 6 to 9 pounds, in weight, and 50 to 60 centimeters, 20 to 24 inches, in height at birth. However, low birth weight is common in developing countries and contributes to the high levels of infant mortality in these regions. Helpless at birth, humans continue to grow for some years, typically reaching sexual maturity at 12 to 15 years of age. Females continue to develop physically until around the age of 18, whereas male development continues until around age 21. The human lifespan can be split into a number of stages, infancy, childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, adulthood, and old age. The length of these stages, however, have varied across cultures and time periods. Compared to other primates, humans experience an unusually rapid growth spurt during adolescence, where the body grows 25% in size. Chimpanzees, for example, grow only 14% with no pronounced spurt. The presence of the growth spurt is probably necessary to keep children physically small until they are psychologically mature. Humans are one of the few species in which females undergo menopause. It has been proposed that menopause increases a woman's overall reproductive success by allowing her to invest more time and resources in her existing offspring and or their children, the grandmother hypothesis, rather than by continuing to bear children into old age. There are significant differences in life expectancy around the world. The developed world is generally aging, with the median age around 40 years. In the developing world, the median age is between 15 and 20 years. 
life expectancy at birth in Hong Kong is 84.8 years for a female and 78.9 for a male, while in Swaziland, primarily because of AIDS, it is 31.3 years for both sexes, while one in five Europeans is 60 years of age or older, only one in 20 Africans is 60 years of age or older. The number of centenarians, humans of age 100 or older, in the world was estimated by the United Nations at 210,000 in 2002. At least one person, Jean Calmet, is known to have reached the age of 122 years. Higher ages have been claimed, but they are not well substantiated. Worldwide, there are 81 men aged 60 or older for every 100 women of that age group, and among the oldest, there are 53 men for every 100 women. Diet Humans are omnivorous, capable of consuming a wide variety of plant and animal material. Varying with available food sources in regions of habitation, and also varying with cultural and religious norms, human groups have adopted a range of diets, from purely vegetarian to primarily carnivorous. In some cases, dietary restrictions in humans can lead to deficiency diseases. However, Stable human groups have adapted to many dietary patterns through both genetic specialization and cultural conventions to use nutritionally balanced food sources. The human diet is prominently reflected in human culture and has led to the development of food science. Until the development of agriculture, approximately 10,000 years ago, Homo sapiens employed a hunter-gatherer method as their sole means of food collection. This involved combining stationary food sources, such as fruits, grains, tubers, and mushrooms, insect larvae, and aquatic mollusks, with wild game, which must be hunted and killed in order to be consumed. It has been proposed that humans have used fire to prepare and cook food since the time of Homo erectus. Around 10,000 years ago, humans developed agriculture, which substantially altered their diet. This change in diet may also have altered human biology, with the spread of dairy farming, providing a new and rich source of food, leading to the evolution of the ability to digest lactose in some adults. Agriculture led to increased populations, the development of cities, and because of increased population density, a wider spread of infectious diseases. The types of food consumed and the way in which they are prepared has varied widely by time, location, and culture. In general, humans can survive for two to eight weeks without food, <coughs> depending on stored body fat. Survival without water is usually limited to three or four days. About 36 million humans die every year from causes directly or indirectly related to hunger. Childhood malnutrition is also common and contributes to the global burden of disease. However, global food distribution is not even, and obesity among some human populations has increased rapidly leading to health complications and increased mortality in some developed and a few developing countries. 
Worldwide, over one billion people are obese, while in the United States, 35% of people are obese, leading to this being described as a, quote, obesity epidemic, end quote. Obesity is caused by consuming more calories than are expended, so excessive weight gain is usually caused by a combination of an energy-dense high-fat diet and insufficient exercise. Biological Variation Most current genetic and archaeological evidence supports a recent single origin of modern humans in West Africa, with first migrations placed at 60,000 years ago. Current genetic studies have demonstrated that humans on the African continent are the most genetically diverse. However, compared to the other great apes, human gene sequences are remarkably homogenous. Nonetheless, there is important biological variation in the human species, with traits such as skin color, eye color, hair color and texture, height and build, and cranial features varying clinically across the globe. Those, those aspects of genetic variation to human evolutionary history, or which are relevant for medical research, have received particular attention. For example, the genes that cause adult humans to be able to digest lactose are present in high frequencies in population that have long histories of cattle domestication, suggesting natural selection having favored that gene in populations that depend on cow milk. Some hereditary diseases, such as sickle cell anemia, are frequent in populations from areas in which malaria has been endemic throughout history. It is believed that the same gene that causes increased resistance to malaria among those who are unaffected carriers of the gene. Similarly, populations that have inhabitant-specific climates, such as Arctic or tropical regions or high altitudes, tend to have developed specific phenotypes that are beneficial for conserving energy in those environments. Short stature and stocky build in cold regions, tall and lanky in hot regions, and with high lung capacities in high altitudes. Similarly, variation in skin color varies clinically with darker colors around the equator, where the added protection from the sun is thought to give an evolutionary advantage, and lighter skin tones closer to the poles, where there is less sunlight, and the lighter colored skin improves vitamin D synthesis. Today, it is possible to determine, by genetic analysis, the geographic ancestry of a person and the degree of ancestry from each region. Such analyses can pinpoint the migrational history of a person's ancestors with a high degree of accuracy. Often, Due to practices of group endogamy, allele frequencies cluster locally around kin groups and lineages, or by national, cultural, or linguistic boundaries, giving a detailed degree of correlation between genetic clusters and population groups when considering many alleles simultaneously. Race there is considerable biological variation in between human populations across the globe, resulting in fairly variable phenotypes. Traditionally, human phenotypical variation has been described as breaking down into large continental races, characterized by easily definable traits. 
Humans were then classified into one of four or five phenotypical groups, often based on skin color, hair texture, and facial anatomy, and which were matched to a continent in which each group were associated. Often, racial classification of humans was described in terms of essential characteristics, and came to serve as a way of naturalizing <clears throat> social and cultural stereotypes about racial groups, in turn justifying or motivating different forms of racism. As the study of human biological variation advanced, it became clear that most variation is distributed and blends gradually from one area to the next with no clear boundaries between continents. Additionally, Different traits have different distributions. This realization made many anthropologists and biologists abandon the idea of major human races, instead describing biological variation in terms of population and distributed traits. Today, there is no scientific consensus on the biological relevance of race. While biological characteristics of an individual can give many clues about the geographical origin of their ancestors, anthropologists generally reject the notion of human, quote, race, end quote, as a biological classification scheme. Instead, they see it as a set of social constructions that map onto, but partly obscures, biological variation. Most anthropologists also maintain that the term race tacitly assumes that races are clearly bounded groups with essential characteristics, often ordered hierarchically and used to justify social inequality. An opposing view has it that it is possible to talk about races without making essentialist or hierarchical assumptions. And some biologists and many forensic scientists use the word race to describe biological variation associated with continental ancestry. It is generally agreed, it is generally agreed upon that certain genetic traits, including some common illnesses, correlate with genetic ancestry from specific regions and genetic ancestry, as determined by racial identification, is becoming an increasingly common tool for risk assessment in medicine. The use of the term race to mean something like subspecies among humans is obsolete. Homo sapiens has no existing subspecies. In its modern scientific connotation, the term is not applicable to a species as genetically homogenous as the human one, as stated in the as stated in the Declaration on Race, UNESCO, 1950, re-ratified, 1978. Genetic studies have genetic studies have substantiated the absence of clear biological borders. Thus, the term race is rarely used in scientific terminology, either in biological anthropology and in human genetics. What in the past had been defined as races, whites, blacks, or Asians, etc., are now defined as ethnic groups or populations in correlation with the field, i.e. sociology, anthropology, genetics, etc., in which they are considered. We now come to the end of the second part, part two of the spoken article, Humans. The next part, part three, contains section five, which includes the topics of psychology, sleep and dreaming, consciousness and thought, motivation and emotion, and sexuality and love. 
This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution hyphen share alike 3.0 unported license available at http colon slash slash creativecommons dot org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0